So, uh, thank you. It's like being home and in such a trusted environment. And uh, thank you for GPC and Synergos for giving me this opportunity. Um, I have to thank you and to thank two special friends. One is Daniel Croft, who's really taught me to trust one another. And I would like also to thank Peggy, who gave me her hand, who gave me her love, and who told me, go and accomplish your dreams. So uh, I'm grateful. Before uh, I continue on, I would like to show you um, a small video which our foundation has uh, clipped. And it's about our, um, the Syrian population, our own population, and our own um, foundation work, how we do holistic work with our Syrian children. Thank you.
Thank you. Right now, at this very moment, millions of Syrians are in need. 6.3 million people are displaced. 7.4 million are isolated and besieged areas. Just over 5 million Syrians are refugees, and out of, three, out of them, 3.3 million are registered refugees in Turkey. Out of 3.3 million are only 10% of them in camps and on the Syrian border, mainly in tents, and if they're lucky enough, they're in container camps. The other 90% are residing in host communities, mostly in southeastern Turkey, close to the border in southeastern. And now, increasingly, moving up to the northwest. Living outside of the camps, Maine faced <clears throat> hosts of hardships. It's not uncommon that famine, economic and sexual exploitation, child marriage, health issues, and many more common every day that they're faced with. Children continue to pay the highest price and bear the heaviest burden of this conflict. And it's been going on for more than four, six years, and we're going into the seventh year. Friends, as someone who runs an NGO for psychosocial and to refugee children, I'm a first-hand observer, and if I'm allowed to share my observation from the field, I must say that the system is in need of real repair. Initially, we responded with our best intentions, and there were very successes to be celebrated. But care of those who have been forced to migrate, because of war is not only about opening borders, nor it is about only providing food and shelter. Key elements were missing. From the response of international community at large, love, care, friendship, and respect are needed. It is my observation from my relationship with the Syrian refugees. Many are losing their hopes. Their resilience is weakening. Self-esteem is being destroyed. And most importantly, almost all of them have lost their faith in humanity. Friends, as philanthropists, it should be our main aim to restore their faith. Because whatever we've been doing so far, I promise you, we can do more. Maybe it's time to change our vantage point, redefine a new, a new way of our commitments. The scale of the crisis put enormous strain on host countries' infrastructure and basic services, particularly in our host community. The needs are acute, especially in the areas of children protection, mental health, and education. The mental health situation of the refugees is alarms. The Mohammed Hamza, a neuropsychologist from the Syrian American Medical Society, has coined a new term for the Syrian experience, human devastation syndrome. Moreover, the political economic situations of the three largest host communities are already fragile. The presence of the refugees only compounds existing problems. It is commonly argued by professionals that cohesion and integration pro programs in host communities combined with the refugees' past traumas from violence and conflicts create the deeper mental health problems. And worst thing is, despite everything that's been done, Syrians often still feel alone. And because they feel alone, they're people like us, like me, and that really long home, and for the life they had before and before the war. We have to show them that they're not alone. So we have to hold their hands 
And let me tell you why I did that. Trauma is devastating. When it happens, and when it happens, but when can be even worse, are the long-term effects that can echo throughout one's entire life. It's the memory of each cell that triggers it. It hope, the hope for the Syrian children and the actions we took. I'm sorry, I get excited. It's something that I never told until now uh, because it's a trusted environment and I never share it to any press, any media, any, uh, any leaflet we, you know, we pressed. So I'm going to tell you a story which I've never said before and I hope that I'll be able to tell it. So it's the first time. So let me tell you why I held my hand to these people. My move into philanthropy was not a solo effort. My son initiated Project Lift when he was 16 year old. I'm sure many of you as parents, as mentors, can relate the desire and hope you have for your loved ones the guidance you want to offer them in life. When Emir, my son, he came to me four years ago with his idea to support Syrian refugee children, our lives had just been comfortable and did not need to change. At this contented point, never did I think that it would be my 16-year-old who would challenge my state of being. Perhaps I had become complacent. We have all been there. In my case, after two major health scares, it felt good to be loved and safe. The thing is, you're never safe after the trauma. Almost losing me twice affected my son, affected our well-being, affected myself, affected our well-being of family. This family trauma coupled with the influx of Syrian refugees to Turkey, especially the children, deeply connected with my son. Luckily, he didn't act in a negative manner, but rather was inspired to help. Project Lift became a way to reconcile his own trauma and his own way to ordeal with me, an ill mother, and fear of losing a mother. His feelings were so intense that all he could think was to find a way to heal and help out. 2010 and 2013 were nightmare years for him, and when he thought he had lost me, so when he saw the hopeless eyes of the children newly arriving to Turkey, forced from the homes, war, losing their loved ones, losing their, their homes, their land, he responded with the compassion and invited me to do this together. His trust in me as a parent and desire to rebuild a secure environment made us a team. Initially, we responded with our best intentions and there were successes to be celebrated. But care for those who have been forced to migrate because the war is not about only opening the borders, nor it's about providing food and shelter, Emir and I we offered them our love. <sighs> so, uh, at the end of year 2004, I had the idea to found our family foundation and have 
project lift under our own foundation program. So our Maya Foundation is not your typical philanthropic enterprise. It is the best explained way, somewhere between a foundation and a local Turkish NGO. We serve as necessary bridge between philanthropy and Syrian families. Our main focus is our mental health and psychological support, community awareness, and integration of Syrian children and families. In order to ensure that no lost generation happens with these children, we support teachers, caregivers, local and international NGO workers through trauma trainings and try to minimize the risk of secondary trauma. These are the strengths and specialties. Our flagship program is Mental Health Psychosocial Program, Project LIFT. Our Therapeutical Creative Arts Workshop serves as psychosocial support. And we support modality utilizing expressive arts, music, dance, and we're focused on healing the individual through evidence-based holistic and humanistic therapy. We are the bridge for success and in education. We have developed recently a very good program and it is called the Trauma Informed Schools. Let me remind you, we have almost 1.4 million children. And out of 1.4 million children, the school age children is 870,000. So the plan is to incorporate these centers and national education system, and the most possible way is in order to prepare the host community, the host community and public schools, in order to receive these children and make the perfect cohesion and integration programs. So over time, with the right support for family and surrounding communities, service providers like Maya Foundation, there is evidence that many aspects of refugee children distress can be reduced. So in the light of former positive results, our project this year, we initiated an MHPSS and integration program. It will be a success story. We support the teachers, administrators, even janitors with training, supervisions, and we hope to support and give you the best news that the Ministry of Education will integrate the two curriculums. Being an NGO person, a mother of three, a grandmother of two, I see this work in humanitarian terms but we also must acknowledge this is a security issue. If we don't support them dealing with trauma, the problems we see from the refugee crisis will be much more destructive in the near future. We all know what we can happen, who these traumatized estranged children could turn into with proper interventions. Without intervention, traumatized children are susceptible to becoming troubled adults and are at high risk of following a criminal or worse path for the rest of their lives. We have to conduct sustainable, inclusive programs that will empower them, that will create opportunities allowing to express themselves and to fulfill their potentials. So I would be grateful for you to hold my hand as well. This is the passion, the passion that drives me. It brings on meaningful change and makes me do my part. My part make this world a better place for children and youth. It was the Syrian crisis at our doorsteps in Turkey that turned my passion into a mission. I have found the one meaning on my life, on my life journey. So I want you to think now, 
today, amongst all of you, what is the only one thing in your lives that drives you? Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you.